With so many products being shown on screen all the time, it can be tricky to know where to start. So I thought that I would talk you through some of my top 10 must have products for beginners and the basic basics that you need in your makeup bag to create any makeup look. Also, I wanna break it down a little bit because there's so many different things being thrown at you when you're a beginner. So I've broken it down into three different groups. Group number one is your moisturizer, foundation, concealer, and powder. Group number two is your bronzers, blushes, and lipsticks. And group number three is your mascara, brow gel, and eyeshadows. So let's get started with group number one. Your first must have product is your moisturizer. So your moisturizer is the last step in your skincare routine, which then becomes your first step in your makeup routine. Your moisturizer gives your makeup something to hold on to. Even if you're using powders, you have to apply a moisturizer first to help even out the texture and give you a better long lasting finish. But I would recommend waiting about five minutes after you apply your moisturizer, just so it has time to fully absorb. And if your skin feels wet after five minutes, you're probably over applying. Blot off the excess and just use less next time. Before we get into it, I wanna talk a little bit about makeup and creating a blank canvas. No one has perfect skin all the time. We all have redness, breakouts, it's totally normal. Foundation and concealer is used to cover these imperfections. However, I don't like to think of it that way. I like to think of them as bringing out and enhancing other areas. Creating a blank canvas so that your eyes show up more, your face shape, your lip shape. It's not always about covering. Sometimes it's about using something to cover, which then enhances something else. Which brings us on to must have product number two, foundation. For beginners, you'll often hear recommendations of tinted moisturizers, BB creams, CC creams, because apparently these are supposed to be easier to apply. However, that's not exactly true. BB creams, tinted moisturizers, they're, they're sheer and lightweight, which is why they're easy to apply. But that's only comparing them to full coverage, heavy foundations. There's lots of foundations out there that are lightweight and sheer as well. And foundations are available in more tones, shades, and finishes compared to BB creams and tinted moisturizers. So you're guaranteed to find the right one that's gonna work perfectly for you. So the basic rule to finding the right foundation is to note these three things, texture, tone, and shade. So the texture is your skin type. And when you're picking out a foundation, it's a bit like picking out a shampoo. If you have dry hair, you go for a moisturizing shampoo, thin hair, volumizing shampoo. And it's the same with foundation. You have dry skin, illuminating foundation, oily skin, mattifying foundation. Then you have your tone, which is your undertone. This is cool, warm, neutral, olive, but people often confuse the undertone with your shade, which is from light to dark. So you wanna take these three things into consideration when you're picking out a foundation and also a concealer. In order to get true coverage, it's best to use a foundation and concealer that work well together. Your foundation is there to be used on larger areas to even them out, and your concealer is then there for the smaller areas that need more coverage. Must have product number four, setting powder. Now for beginners, I would actually recommend using a pressed powder, but it is totally up to you. Setting powders seal everything in place. They create a uniform texture all over the skin because foundation and concealers, they can set at different rates. And setting powders create a shine-free base that the rest of your powdered blushes and bronzers will easily glide over the top of. So that's group number one. Moving on to group number two, bronzers, blushes, and lipsticks. So must have number five bronzer. I want to talk real quick about the difference between contour and bronzer. Your contour is a matte shade, always matte, a dull shadowy like tone, and it's used in the low points of the face to emphasize the bone structure. Bronzer, however, can be satin matte or shimmer, usually more of a vibrant, warmer tone, and it's used on the high points of the skin. Basically where the sun would hit the face, that's where you apply bronzer. For beginners, I would actually recommend using a pressed powder in about one shade or more darker than your skin. That way you can use this on the high points or the low points. Perfect if you really don't know what you're doing. Must have number six, blush, and must have number seven, lipsticks go hand in hand. Sometimes it can feel impossible to figure out what shade to use, but if you pair these two together, it will make it so much easier. So here are my three tricks for picking out the perfect lipstick and the perfect blush. Match the lips. 
Use your bare lips as a guide and basically mimic this in your blush and your lipstick. And then you can just adjust it going brighter or lighter depending on the look that you want to create. But using your lips as your first guide. Mix and match. If you have a lipstick that you love, maybe it's a bright pink, try then going for a more muted pink on your cheeks or a coral cheek, a coral lip. The only time you don't want to do this is when you're wearing red because you can kind of look like a clown, but I do have a video coming up really soon on how to actually wear red, but mixing and matching your shades will help to bring the entire look together. And the last one is to match your cheeks. So run around or very lightly pinch your cheeks to see what color they go. And then try and get a lipstick and a blush to match that color. And there you go. Perfect shade for you. Moving on to group number three. We have mascara, which is pretty self-explanatory, though I'd love to hear what your favorite mascaras are, so definitely leave a comment. And then we have brow gel. I always think for beginners, brow gel is probably the easiest thing to start off with because filling in your brows can feel a little bit too much at times. Start off with a clear gel, move on to a tinted, and then you'll eventually get used to how you want your brows to look. And must have product number 10, eyeshadows. So you really only need three eyeshadows to create a look, and I talked about this last week. You need a light, you need a medium, and you need a dark. And they're kind of your basic starting points and then you can add around those. But I would recommend for beginners to start off with neutral shades, then move on to green tones, purple tones, but start off with a nice neutral basic palette just so you can get used to using eyeshadows. And there you go, those are my top 10 products. Definitely let me know if there's anything I missed out, something you would swap in, or let me know what your favorites are because I love hearing from you guys and I will see you guys in the next one.